Stable foods have been used as a basis for food pe preparation by many cultures for several centuries. As a prepper, you should consider incorporating staple foods into your everyday diet and into your preps. In this video, we're going to unpack that, so make sure you hang around. Hey y'all, I'm Gray Madden from Self Reliance Publishing, and in this video, we're going to be talking about staple foods and why you should incorporate them into your everyday life and into your preps. Before we get going, let's talk a little bit about what staple foods are. To me, a staple food is anything that can be produced on a large scale, relatively inexpensively, and stored for a long period of time, relatively easily. Some examples of staple foods would be corn, beans, potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, and things of that nature. Now, I meant to touch on staple foods in my video what preppers can learn from Hispanic culture because Hispanic people are very good at incorporating these staple foods into their daily diet. I didn't get around to it in the video because it was dragging on and getting kind of long as is so I decided to cut that portion out and make it its own standalone video. But if you look at a Hispanic diet and sort of analyze it a little bit you can see a lot of the basis of their dishes comes down to three staples. You got corn, rice, and beans. Hispanics aren't the only people that do this though. In fact, if you look at southern culture here in the United States, they use at least two of those same sort of staple dishes. Uh, you, find his, you find southerners using corn and cornbread and beans with baked beans. So they use a lot of the same they use at least two of the same staples. They just use them in different forms. And so that's the takeaway right there. Just because you make the decision to cook using staple foods and start incorporating them into your daily life doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have boring food or eat the same thing day in and day out. There's many different ways that you can, for can fix it in different manners and sort of dress it up and make it new and exciting so you don't get bored of eating the same stuff every day. I believe staple foods are important to prepping for a few reasons. The big one is sustainability and the other one is to conserve resources. And those thoughts can be sort of summed up in a couple of different sayings. The first one is you should store what you eat. And that saying right there cuts out freeze-dried foods. Here in America, we live in a consumer society. With the food that we eat every day, it's going to more and more processed food, stuff that comes in packaging ready to eat. In the prepper market, it's not much different. You've got many companies coming up with these freeze-dried food packages. Uh, they, they'll market all kinds of different packages with X amount of food for X amount of days for X number of people and people buy it. But to me, that's a waste of money and it's a waste of food because you got to take your disposable income to purchase that food and put it to the side and it's likely to never get eaten. So it's tied up your money and if it never gets eaten, it's wasted that money and it's wasted the food. If you start incorporating staple foods into your daily, daily diet, you can, with time, start purchasing a little bit extra each time you go to the store and build up a stockpile of a year to two years supply of food relatively quickly and relatively inexpensively. And that will never be a waste because once you get to whatever threshold you're looking at, whether that be three months, six months, a year, two years, you start rotating that food so it will eventually get eaten and it hasn't cost you any extra money because you're going to eat it eventually. So it doesn't require any disposable income unlike the freeze-dried food. The sort of saying, add-on saying to that is eat what you grow. So store what you eat and eat what you grow. And the eat what you grow aspect of it is the sustainability portion 
of the deal. If you're a prepper and you've got all this freeze-dried food saved up, that's all fine and good, but what happens if you do need to use a food and you go through your entire stockpile, but the grocery stores still haven't come back, the economy still hasn't come back, and you're really in no better position at that point in time. You're out of food, you're out of luck. Well, if you have, if you've changed your diet over to stable foods and you've stocked up on that, you've got a year, two year supply of stable foods, and at the same time you're learning how to garden and grow these staples, and you're doing that on a small time, small scale here and now, that will be, that will put you light years ahead of the other people. Many of the staple foods that I talked about can easily be grown in your backyard, uh, with the exception of maybe rice. I, I'm not growing rice in my backyard, I don't know about you, but chances are you're not either. But the other stuff, the corn, beans, uh, potatoes and sweet potatoes, can all be grown on a small scale in your backyard. So if you get started learning how to grow those crops today, then you're going to have the skills and the experience needed to expand that garden in the future should the need arise. And you're going to be ahead of the people who have bought freeze-dried food and you're going to be ahead of the people who have bought seeds to store away but have never gardened. Don't be that guy because there's a skill set and a, and a learning curve to gardening. So it's important to get started on that even on a tiny scale today so that you have some experience to work with in the future should you need to do it for real. So that's sort of my take on incorporating staple foods into your diet. I would encourage you to do it in order to eliminate wasted money, wasted food, and to have a plan that is sustainable and allows you to be self-reliant. Hopefully you got something out of this video. As always, appreciate every like, every comment, and every subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.